You are looking at Kathy Smith, the creator of aerobic exercise. She's a longtime fitness expert and nearly 60 years old. She is, quite frankly, ageless, and she says you can be too. Want to find out how? Then stick with us for this edition of It's Your Call. It doesn't matter how old you are, we all want to look younger and thinner and be healthy. Today we have some very specific ways that you can be ageless from a woman who is in fact ageless herself. Kathy Smith, she's a 30 year veteran of the fitness industry and she's put out countless exercise videos, including her most recent DVD. It's called Ageless with Kathy Smith, Staying Strong. She's going to be joining us in just a few moments. First though, let me say hello to everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lynn Doyle, and as part of Comcast and NBC Universal's Healthy Week, we're delighted to be part of an initiative to help you become healthier. And what better way to do that than to give you access to a woman who has committed her entire life to doing just that. Kathy Smith made her entree into the fitness industry more than 40 years ago, and she's taught millions of people how to exercise correctly. She created what's now known as aerobic exercise, and as I said, she sold over 16 million videos. Most recently, though, she's become the spokesperson for the International Council on Active Aging, and I am delighted to welcome her to It's Your Call. Kathy, thank you for being here. Thank you, Lynn. What a great introduction. I love that. Thank you, and I'm so thrilled to be talking to you because I personally have been into fitness from the time that I was a young woman. And as I've aged, I've tried to stay with it. And you've always been such a great role model for women. And now here you are looking at your 60th birthday and still as strong as, as ever. I, I thought you weren't supposed to bring those, that age up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, I'm actually proud of it. You know, when I started with this whole uh, aerobic craze, I was actually in my late 20s, and at that point, we were doing high impact aerobics. And then, you know, I had my babies, and I started doing pregnancy videos. After that, it was trying to get the tummy and the and everything back in shape. I actually did a menopause video about 10 years ago. So this is just the natural transition to the type of things that I'm into, and all my friends are and it seems like everybody around me is into, well, which is how do you age gracefully? Absolutely, and of course with the baby boomers now, you know, looking at uh, the second half of their lives, we are not at all content with getting fat or being inactive. In fact, we want to do the same things that we did when we were 20, but of course, as you know, it's not as easy to do it when you get a little bit older. No, it's not as easy to do it, but at the same time, there's a lot of fun things you can do, and it's more important than ever. And 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 that's the key to just remember: it's more important as you get older than than it was when you were younger. And you can start at any age, so you don't have to. It doesn't matter if you have not been exercising; you can start at any age to really turn back the clock. Now, tell me why you say it's more important as you get older to exercise because most people find that they, they have the energy for it when they're younger, but when they're a little bit older, they're like, oh, you know what, it's just not a priority to me, or I don't have time, or I, I, I can't start back because I'm out of shape. So why is it so important that we exercise even as we age? Name any body part, and, it, and, and exercise will make it, uh, will improve that area of your body, whether it's internal or external. So you think about it, and after the age of 30, we start to lose muscle mass. With that loss, our metabolism slows down. What happens after that is you put on weight, and what happens after that is that you start to get back pain, knee pains, aches and pains throughout your whole body. Every single study that's coming out says if you want to prevent back pain, if you want to have more energy, if you want to keep your smarts, if you want to you know, keep uh, just your mental alertness, if you want to keep your functionality, and that's the key that we talk about. I, I want to show you even one thing here, a very simple exercise that I teach people, and it's a very functional exercise which just is you need to sit up and stand stand up and sit down throughout the day whether it's in a chair in a car and, and what happens is if you don't do exercise you start to get weakened quadricep muscles so a simple exercise can we do can I show you something right sure. now okay so a really simple exercise that that I love people do is when you sit back and actually you can do it with your dress on uh, <laughs> as long as you keep your legs okay. together <laughs> 
<laughs> so just do my best. <laughs> I just want you, and at home they can be doing this also. If you extend one leg out, you lift up on your kneecap. So most women talk about, and people talk about, how their knees start to get saggy. To protect the knee and also to make sure that you have strong quadriceps, a simple move is just lift that leg and lower. And lift the leg, and after you do about 10 of those, you grab onto the leg and now just extend and bend. And if you don't have that flexibility to keep it that high, you keep it down here. But that simple little motion there strengthens the top of the leg. Now, eventually you can add some ankle weights to that and do it with ankle weights or move to the next step, which maybe I'll show you in a minute, which is a little seated squat that really mm -hmm. keeps your rear end, your legs and everything just in tip top shape, but also the word is functional. You want to be able to climb the stairs, to run with your grandkids, to go down those ski slopes if you want to, to get on the golf course. You want to stay functional. You know, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I think that's a really important message. It's not just looking Looking good. Obviously, we all want to look as good as we can at any age. But to be able to and you function, look great, by the way. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. But you really want to be able to function. You you want to be able to do those things that you just mentioned, and 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 have a quality of life. And if exercise contributes to that, then that should be the motivation. Not so much that you might see a, a dress size change or your pants or waist might you know get smaller. But if you, if you're able to really enjoy your life, that to me would be the biggest motivator. Well, that. That's, that's what it's all about, Lynn. I mean, really, uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, we still want it, 50s, 60s, we still want to look good. But it's about feeling good. I People come up to me and they say, Kathy, you know, I sort of know I can't quite look the way you do. It's genetics and things yeah. like that. But I want to feel the way you. I want that energy. I want that vitality that you have. And that's with, uh, that's exercise. And they also, you know, they've probably gone to the doctor. Maybe the doctor said, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, perhaps your lung capacity, your breathing, every single, every single organ in your body is affected by exercise. So it's just one of those things, it's a non-negotiable <laughs> when you're, it really is. I mean, I tell people you do not get up in the morning and think about brushing your teeth. So you should, I mean, you don't get up and say, should I brush my teeth? Should I brush my teeth? You go and do it. Exercise after the age of 50 has to become the same thing, non-negotiable. All right. Well, I'd like to start it even before that. So no matter <laughs> what age you are, if you are watching this show, we want you to get motivated and to exercise so that not only are you healthy, but that you can enjoy your life as um, to its fullest extent. Now, of course, as always, we want to know what you think. So I'm asking you what you think the biggest exercise challenge for you is and do you think that you need help getting motivated if so what what would help you what is it that would get you up every morning and say hey I'm gonna to exercise today and if you've already been exercising what's worked best for you over the years if you have questions or comments for Kathy she's here and she is more than willing to answer them for you you can email me directly at Lynn at lynndoyle.net and as always you can find us on Facebook we will be uh, tweeting about this on Twitter and then this video will be on YouTube as well so we're gonna you use the word before um, well, you mentioned menopause, which is a whole other subject. <laughs> you won't go there. <laughs> Muscle mass, you talked about that. That metabolism, that's the M word. That's a dirty word in my household. What do we do to kickstart that metabolism and, and, and get it to function to its highest functioning level? Because the metabolism, when it slows down, just seems like it's a killer. I know. Two things. Two big keys. One, strength training. So here, you need a set of dumbbells, couple sets of dumbbells in your house because all you need to do is put on a little muscle mass. Okay. And you can do things like bicep curls. You can do, and, and, and while you're sitting yeah. there, you sure. can do this. Hey, might as yeah. well get yeah. a workout well. in. <laughs> simple bicep curls, and that's what we talk about on the DVD, but simple bicep curls, things like tricep extensions. You can do your, so you're working the back of the arm and the front of the arm, and this right. is the one where, uh, uh, you keep doing it yeah. that way, but I'm gonna turn this direction. Get rid of this you. right here. So here, this simple exercise, extend, Band is working the back of the arm, which every single woman talks about, you know, needing help with. Absolutely. And so when you put on muscle mass, what happens is that muscle burns more calories and it allows you to also do your other activities at a higher intensity. So really strength training is the key, but the other key with the latest research is what's called interval training. And interval training burns more calories while you're doing your aerobics and it also burns more calories after you're done. So let me explain what interval training is. You go out for your walk, right? You're walking along. 
all of a sudden you warm up. Now you decide that for 90 seconds you're going to pick up the pace. So you go faster. You go faster. And it's just that point where you get to po the end of the 90 seconds where you think, okay, I got to pull it back. And you go back to your steady state again. You do that for two minutes and then you pick it up. That going back and forth helps pick up the fitness level, but it burns more calories. But the, the, also the studies show that you burn more calories throughout the day. And that's what helps. Uh, boost your metabolism. Okay, great advice as always. And of course, you can get advice if you get this DVD or one of the many others that she has done. It's called Ageless with Kathy Smith Staying Strong. So here's the thing we're going to take a break, but I'm going to ask you a question. What is the one thing that every woman needs to have under her bed to remain ageless like Kathy Smith? Well, to find out, you got to stick with us. We're coming back in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back, everyone, to It's Your Call as we celebrate Healthy Week with NBC Universal. My guest is Kathy Smith. It would be fair to describe her as an exercise guru. She was the creator of fitness DVDs, including her most recent one, which is called Ageless with Kathy Smith, Staying Strong. And I was fascinated to learn that she was actually the, the creator of aerobic exercise. Well, I, I, it was a book. The first book that I did was called Aerobic Exercise. But just to clarify, Ken Cooper is a doctor who actually created the term aerobics back in, you know, in the late 70s. So, I mean, early 70s. And and then I came out with a book called Aerobic Exercise. And you have witnessed all kinds of changes from the time that you started in the fitness industry. I mean, there was a time when high impact aerobic exercise was all the rage. And then we went through a period where they said, oh no, you gotta slow that down. It's bad for the knees, you're banging the joints. And then it was like strength training for women and, and weight training for women. And now we're doing interval training. What works best in your opinion? A combination. So. Uh, cardio, uh, aerobic exercise three days a week, and then strength training three days a week. And then throughout the week, you want to be doing some stretching or something, uh, yoga, you mentioned you did yoga today, mm -hmm. something that really increases the range of motion and just stretches everything out. So I would say you should shoot for doing six days a week, <laughs> <laughs> minimum of 30 minutes. And, uh, and that, and because we're talking to a lot of people that are in retirement age, they, they, you do have a little bit more time. So it's not bad to think of that 30 to, to 60 minute time period. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Uh, and one day off, right? You do need to rest your body from time to time, right? Yeah, the, you do need to rest your body if you're if you're working out intensely. Although I'm telling you, the studies are keep showing that really bodies are meant to move. They mm -hmm. really are meant to move. I'm actually surprised. There's some things coming out now that say seven days a week. I mean, just get out for a walk. Right. But you, the more you can do uh, gentle activity every day, the better for you. And what's considered cardio? vascular activity. What, what kinds of examples would you give that people could do? Walking is what I, the, the no excuse workout. You walk out the front door, that's cardio, but it's not window shopping walking. You need to pick up the pace a little bit. And that's why on a scale of one to 10, you know, I give a scale of one to 10 being one, I'm not doing anything and 10, I can't, you know, I'm not gonna make it for another 30 seconds. You wanna be somewhere between that six, seven or eight on your walk. Okay. Uh, it run used to be that if you could talk during cardio, that you weren't doing it enough. But now are we supposed to be able to have a conversation while we're doing our, our cardio workout or should we really be somewhat breathless? Breathless, I breathless. mean, for part of it, for okay. part of it. Not all the time, but you know, it's okay to go and have the carry on the conversations, but a couple times through the week, you wanna to get to that point, whereas we talked about before in the last segment, that you are actually pushing it because that's where you see change in your body. Okay, so walking obviously is, anyone walking. can do it, hopefully. Uh, elliptical, any of your uh, cardio equipment at the gym, swimming, mm. um, winter sports, I mean, hiking, getting outdoors and doing uh, snowshoeing, hiking, cross-country skiing. But uh, all of the great, sometimes dancing, if you take a good dance class, <laughs> yeah. can, can really be a cardio workout. Oh my gosh, workout. you've seen Kirstie Alley on Dancing with the oh, Stars yeah, yeah. this season. Oh my gosh, so she, that exercise must really just, the weight's just falling off I saw off her the her. other night, I go, oh my gosh, she looks like a different person. I know, I know. and that's gotten, she's attributing that to 
a, a good diet and and having regular workouts. Now, obviously, we can't do that every day, all day. Although it sounds like a really good time. If Nancy <laughs> no. wants to call me, I'll, I'm in I was going to say, you'll <laughs> sign up right now. So you said that uh, that cardio, obviously, three days a week, and then the strength training, and that can be the the um, dumbbells that you mentioned. Do we have to go to the gym and be working on that big, scary equipment that sometimes intimidates people? No, it's dumbbells. It's your own body weight. So here's here's an example of uh, of a good strength training exercise. You can use your own body weight. You can also use tubing, which I use all the time when I travel but a simple exercise which I'm just gonna stand up and then I'm gonna sit down okay I'm gonna stand <laughs> up and I'm gonna sit down now this time when I sit down I'm not gonna sit down all the way I'm gonna graze right there I'm gonna come and come back up again and I just as I go and just before I hit I'm gonna come back up now that exercise right there I'm using my own body weight but if you try to do 10 of those at home mm -hmm. and then build up where you're not touching your seat you will and build up to three sets of ten your backside your hamstrings your butt your quads will all start to change shape so using your own body weight and even when you're watching TV there's no reason like right now when you're watching TV that you can't be doing something use all these opportunities to multitask I do leg lifts when I cook when I'm brushing <laughs> my teeth I sometimes do you know some squats but really there you try to st try to get it throughout the day see there is no excuse for not <laughs> exercising according to Kathy Smith we don't want to hear any excuses now before before we took our break before I teased you and said what is it that every woman needs to have under her bed to remain ageless and I don't even want to share with you some of the comments <laughs> that came into my ear but <laughs> one of them actually is as we teased before just dumbbells like this why is it so important to just have light weights this is what five pounds I think you have mm -hmm. three threes and, two, and yeah, twos. twos what why is this going to keep us ageless because when you uh, have something simple like this at home underneath your bed you're going to use it so all you have to do when you get up in the morning before you think of anything else you pick up your dumbbells and you do a quick just bicep curls and goes right into your overhead extensions something simple like that keeping on the muscle mass is what's going to keep now see right mm -hmm. here you're working right here at the shoulder right here you have the bicep the shoulder and the tricep in one simple motion like that right so again right there now that's gonna make us shapely but guess what when we go to pick up our suitcases when we go to pick up our groceries when we go to pick up our grandkids think about it what grandkids are you know they're 20 <laughs> I mean a toddler right. is 25 pounds I have uh, my twin grandsons who are four and believe me my daughter has biceps on her like you wouldn't believe from picking them up all the time and you want to make sure your back is strong because if your back's not strong you're gonna go pick up your uh, groceries or something right. and you're gonna get a sore back right. so that's what keeps you strong is the strength training now I don't want people to start thinking though if I strength train I'm gonna get bigger first of all remember as we age we not only lose our hormone our hormones like estrogen and progesterone we also lose testosterone so women didn't have enough testosterone to begin with to get really big but you even have less of a chance of getting a really a too big when you're you know over the age of 50. Well it's funny that you say that because I, um, one of the responses that I got to our Facebook question is I've been working out and um, lifting weights you know albeit light ones but I'm heavier on my scale and this is really depressing to me and she wanted to know you know what's happening here like what's the story and I wrote back to her in anticipation of your visit and said well how do your clothes fit she said oh my clothes feel great they feel loose and they feel better and I said well I'm gonna ask Kathy about this so is there should we always be looking at the scale or should we really just look and see how the how we feel and look in our clothes yeah don't don't rely on the scale uh, for the total picture it's one small number and remember muscle weighs more than fat mm. so when you put on a little more muscle the scale might go up just a little bit but your body is going to start shrinking so the great news is your waist gets smaller your hips get smaller or your legs get smaller and that's what you want you want to notice how the clothes fit how you look in the mirror and how strong you feel as soon as you start to feel that strength you're going to feel energy when you get out of bed like when you go on your walks you're going to feel springier mm -hmm. there'll be a spring in your step so really think more about how you feel than the than the weight on the scale and all of this we've been talking about 
seems like it's geared to women but it actually works for men as well right i mean they don't necessarily have to be pumping the 35 or 45 pounders to to make a difference in their bodies either right no you can uh, you men don't have to but i'm going to go on record here i don't want women to be afraid of weights uh, i i mean you see the videos playing right here so you see that i don't have um you know, big muscles. But the weights that I'm using in that DVD, I'm using eight pounds. I'm using my own body weight there, which I'm doing a push up. And I weigh 135 pounds. And so you're using your own body weight. I, I use 15 pound weights to do my bicep curls. And all I'm, I'm only mentioning that because weights are not something to be afraid of. Okay, well, that's the question that we're asking as we take this break. Are you afraid of weights? <laughs> if so, Stay with us and find out why you don't have to be. We're going to stay ageless right here on It's Your Call. Stay with us. Thanks so much for joining us once again. I'm Lynn Doyle. This is It's Your Call. And as part of of NBCU's Healthy Week. We are talking with Kathy Smith and getting some suggestions on what we can do to remain ageless, which obviously she has uh, mastered this because no one would know how old you were if I wasn't announcing it to the entire world. But we want to talk um, very quickly about um, not being afraid of exercise because even if people had not had an exercise program as part of their daily routine and they want to get started, many people are intimidated by that. So what do you say to people who have never exercised before to get them out there and try it? Well, a I, I, uh, couple things. One is think about finding a group. I, I really mm. feel that groups, uh, that group motivation, it could be a girlfriend, a couple girlfriends that are going out walking, it could be a class in the neighborhood, but typically doing it on your own if you haven't been doing it ever, you know, you just can't find the spirit, the time, the energy to do it. Right. So find a group, find a friend, start out with something easy. You want to be successful in the beginning. So, so I don't care if somebody says, I got the best class in town, it's a new TRX training. You know, go to some, an easy class that you're going to be, uh, be successful and then build on that. And what if you are like me, for example, and I've been exercising my whole life and I find myself Sometimes I, I get bored. Sometimes I'm like, all right, I must have worked out so often that nothing else works. Like it's just, I feel very strong and very healthy, but I, I don't really feel like anything super challenges me anymore. What do you say to those people? Lynn, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's great. No, I know I like that. That's, um, you know what, there's always something new coming out. And I would say um, everything from, there, there are a couple good uh, fitness sites out there, but there are things like, um, um, again, like TRX training, there, you know, there, is, uh, there are karate classes, there's different boxing classes, there's different dance classes. One thing I, I want to suggest is uh, challenge yourself to do something that's rhythmic. Because as we age, uh, remember, we lose some balance, you start to lose balance, and a little bit of that coordination. So something where you just even have to go one, two, three, tap and change direction. <laughs> and if it's the guys, I see guys in these classes too. Or, I mean, even if it's a little belly dancing, or I mean, I, I was actually at a, I was actually at a, um, a group uh, of 60 plus, and they had uh, all made scarves, and they started belly dancing. But something where you have to learn rhythm <laughs> is is uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> laughing. This is this will be my next thing now. I'm going to try belly dancing. <laughs> actually, actually, no. Listen, I'm going to send you my belly dancing v DVD okay. because I think it'd be a great segment, and you would be so good at it. Oh. And, and once you and once you, you obviously no, don't know no. me, <laughs> but once you see the outfits I mean and the look and then and actually it really is the biggest change that I've seen in my abs is when I started boxing I love boxing and then also belly dancing okay that's on my bucket <laughs> list to belly dance with Kathy Smith I love it thank you it. thank you so much for being with us I really appreciate it I wish we weren't out of time oh. but you've given us so many um, great pieces of advice and I encourage everybody to take Kathy's advice and to get her DVDs particularly this last one staying strong Thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you. It was great being here. Thank You're you. terrific. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Watch for me on the Belly Dancing channel <laughs> the next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>